are the knights dedicated to Christ and his holy mother. We, we are the knights of St. Michael. God formed man from the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. But it was not good for man to be alone, so the Creator made him a helper, like unto himself. The Lord cast a deep sleep upon Adam, and took one of his ribs, and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib which the Lord took from Adam, he made into a woman, and brought her to Adam. We might ask why Eve's body was not formed in the same way as the first man, also out of the dust of the earth. Why was Eve formed from one of Adam's ribs? St. Thomas Aquinas explains that this signifies the special relationship meant to exist between a man and a woman. He writes that Eve was not taken from the head of Adam because woman was not intended to be the head or the ruler of a man. Neither was she made from his feet because she was not to be the slave of a man. She was formed of his rib because she came from the place closest to his heart. A woman is to stand by the man's side as his helpmate throughout life, supporting him in work, consoling him in sorrow, sharing his happiness, and taking her place as the one nearest and dearest to his heart. This is marriage. This is what it's meant to look like from the beginning. Realize then how ancient marriage is. It's as old as the human race. Come with us as we rediscover the roots and purpose of marriage. The nights are on now. It's nighttime. Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for any cause? Have you not read that the Creator from the beginning made them male and female and said, for this cause a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and they too shall be in one flesh? Therefore they are no longer two but one flesh what therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Why then did Moses command to give notice of dismissal and to put her away? Because Moses, by reason of the hardness of your heart, permitted you to put away your wives. But it was not so from the beginning. And I say to you that whoever puts away his wife except for immorality, and marries another, commits adultery. And he who marries a woman who has been put away, commits adultery. and welcome to Warren World News. I'm Dan. And I'm Mary. Today we ask the age-old question that plagues mankind. What is the purpose of marriage? If you were to judge what marriage is by reading magazines or watching television and movies, you may believe that the purpose of marriage is nothing more than a chance for romance and sexual compatibility. If the romance dies, the couple can easily dissolve the marriage. And though talk shows, reality shows, magazines, self-help psychology books, and marriage programs claim to be the experts on the subject, statistics tell us that almost one half of them are doomed from the beginning and end in divorce. Facing those statistics, the majority of modern-day couples choose to live together before marriage, and about 10% of couples with children decide to never marry at all. 
We are told that Catholics live together, divorce, and remarry at the same rate as the rest of the world. It seems as though God has been pushed out of the equation, and chastity and virginity are forgotten virtues. Marriage is no longer a sacred or sacramental affair. Instead of the solemn covenant, it is considered nothing more than red tape, and the wedding ceremony, a theatrical legal formality. But the truth of the matter is, marriage is a sacrament and a serious commitment. It is far more than the flippant, casual contract so often seen today. So we here at Warren ask, would marriage have a better success rate if we returned to the traditional view of marriage? What is its true purpose? And how can it last? We searched and found these answers. Number one, marriage is a free agreement by which a man and a woman live together as husband and wife until separated by death. It is the most important and momentous contract that can be made. While others are concerned with material things, such as money, real estate, or business enterprise, this contract is concerned with human souls, and thus it is a covenant as well, which involves the exchange of persons and not simply goods or services. The primary end or purpose of marriage is the begetting of children. The sexual powers, which are a part of human nature, are chiefly ordained to bring new life into the world and to continue the human race. The secondary end or purpose is the joy, companionship, love, and mutual assistance that can be given to each spouse. Sexual gratification or conjugal love is included in this end. Note that sexual intimacy is meant to be part of a lifelong and total commitment, not a selfish end in itself. Despite the angry objections of men and women throughout the centuries, Holy Mother Church has stood strong and been wise enough to insist on preserving the sanctity of the sacrament of marriage. She does not waver or change her definition despite the confusion regarding divorce and remarriage and so-called homosexual marriage. New human laws and governments might attempt to legally change the definition of marriage, but as we have seen, that cannot be done without devastating consequences. It was God himself who instituted marriage, and he first ordained it in paradise. Adam and Eve were the first man and the first woman joined by God in wedlock. They were the first bride and bridegroom created for one another, and their union was decreed and consecrated by God himself. May we all enjoy such providence and blessings on our marriages today. Signing off from WARN World News, I'm Mary. And I'm Dan. You have been warned. In the days of the Old Testament, during the evil reign of King Saul Manassar, there lived a holy Jewish man named Tobias. During that dreadful time, most of God's chosen people had forsaken their Jewish faith for the abominable pagan rites of the Assyrians. Tobias, on the other hand, never strayed from the ancient faith of his fathers. He tirelessly traveled among his people, begging them to return to the one true God. He fed the hungry, clothed the poor, and risked his life to bury the dead with honor. One day, exhausted from this work, he lay down beside a wall. While he was sleeping, hot dung fell from a swallow's nest, landed in his eyes, and he became blind. From that day forward, the great man became almost helpless. Nevertheless, Tobias was never angry with God. Instead, he continued giving thanks all the days of his life. But on the other hand, his kinsmen laughed and mocked him. <laughs> where is thy hope now, O blind Tobias? Now where is thy God? Oh, brethren, do not speak this way. We are the children of the saints. Oh, Lord, 
I know thou art just. And all thy ways are mercy and truth. Do not take revenge upon my past sins, but command this spirit to be received in peace. For it is now better for me to die than to live. Now it also happened on that same day, in another city, there was a young, beautiful virgin named Sarah. Sarah had been wedded seven times, and each time a devil named Asmodeus killed her husband before he entered into the bridal chamber. Hence, her days were spent in great sorrow, and on this day, Sarah cried out again with tears and begged God that he would deliver her from this great shame. Blessed are you, God of our fathers. I turn my face to thee and beg thou to set me free from the bonds of this evil disgrace, or else set my soul free from this earth. Thou knowest, O Lord, I have never longed to be with a man, and I have kept my soul clean. At that wonderful moment in time, the prayers of both Tobias and Sarah ascended to heaven as incense, and the holy angel Raphael was sent to heal them both. However, old Tobias, believing he was to die soon, called his young son to his bedside. Hear these words, my son, and lay them upon my heart. When God shall take my soul, bury my body. But remember, honor thy mother all the days of her life, and be mindful of the great perils she has suffered for thee. Then, when she too shall die, bury her alongside me. Have God on thy mind, and never transgress the commandments of the Lord. Give alms to the needy, and do not turn thy back upon the poor. And my son, take heed to keep thyself clean from all immorality, and rest only beside thy wife. The increasing poverty and hunger caused by his blindness reminded old Tobias of a long forgotten debt owed to him. So he requested his son to travel to a friend named Gabalus to recover the debt. However, the son needed someone to guide him through Israel, and as he searched, he found a beautiful young man prepared to travel. Not knowing he was an angel of God, Tobias saluted him. Where art thou from, good man? I am of the children of Israel. Do thou know the way to the city of Rages, in the country of the Medes? I know it well, and have often traveled through its roads.
after all things were made ready for the journey, they departed and lodged the first night by the Tigris River. As Tobias went out into the river to wash, behold, a monstrous fish came up ready to attack. The angel called out, Do not fear, Tobias. Take him by the gill and draw him to thee. This Tobias did and pulled the creature up onto the land. Tobias, take out the organs of the fish and lay up the heart, the gallbladder, and the liver. These are useful in the art of medicine. The gall is good for anointing the eyes, and if thou put a piece of the heart upon hot coals, the smoke will drive away all kinds of devils. As young Tobias and his mysterious guide traveled on through Israel, one evening they approached the small city of Rages. My friend, in this city lives a man named Raguel, a near kinsman of yours, who lives with his wife and one virgin daughter named Sarah. One day, you are to inherit all his possessions, since he has no son. So therefore, ask Raguel for his daughter's hand in marriage. Forgive me, my friend, but perhaps you have not heard. There is a story told about this maiden that she has been wed seven times, and each husband died in a sudden way. Moreover, I have heard it was the devil who had killed them. Hear me well, Tobias, and I will tell thee who they are over whom the devil can prevail. It is over those who receive matrimony and shut God out from their mind, and give themselves to their lust as a horse or mule. It is over these that the devil has such great power. Give thyself over to nothing else but prayer for three days and nights. On the first night, lay the liver of the fish on the fire, and the devil shall be driven away. On the third night, thou shalt lie with the virgin, but moved rather for love of children than for lust. And so they made their way to the house of Raguel, who recognized Tobias and received them with great joy. He then commanded that a feast be prepared. At that point, young Tobias asked Raguel for his daughter's hand in marriage. And even though Raguel was frightened to do so, the marriage ceremony was arranged. After they had eaten, he brought young Tobias to Sarah's bedchamber. Arise, lovely Sarah, and let us pray. Today, tomorrow, and the next day, because for these three nights, we are to be joined to God. And when the third night is over, we will be joined in wedlock. For we are the children of saints and must not be joined together like heathens who do not know their God. Lord, 
God of our fathers, may the heavens, the earth, the sea, and all thy creatures bless thee. Lord, thou did give Eve to our father Adam for a wife and companion. And now, dear Lord, I take my wife Sarah, not for fleshly lust, but for the love of our future children and descendants. In which thy name shall be blessed forever and ever. Thus the couple did as the angel commanded, and for three days and nights begged God for mercy. As the smoke ascended, the archangel Raphael overpowered the devil that had tormented blessed Sarah and bound him up in the desert of Egypt. Tobias, it is now time to return to thy father as soon as thou enter thy father's house, first adore the Lord and give thanks. Then go to thy father and anoint his eyes with the gall of the fish that was taken from the river. As the angel said, Tobias anointed his eyes with the gall of the fish, and his father immediately recovered his sight. Father, <laughs> I bless thee, Lord God of Israel, because thou hast saved me. Behold, behold, Father, I can I see Tobias, my son. It is honorable to confess the works of God. Give glory to him in the sight of all who live. For Tobias, when you prayed in tears and sorrow, I offered thy prayers to the Lord, and he sent me to heal thee and to deliver Sarah, thy son's wife, from Asmodeus the devil. For I am the angel Raphael, one of the seven who stand before the Lord. And it is time now that I return. Being created in God's image, we were formed out of love for love. God gave Adam the gift of life and gave him Eve as his companion, for Adam was not made to be alone. In God's wisdom and generosity, he gave Sarah to Tobias. They stand as yet another sign of contradiction for our day and age. They shine with the glory and majesty for living out the will of God. Love, not lust, was their foundation of the relationship. Prayer and dependence upon God molded their actions. Respect and mutual trust formed their lifelong commitment. If you are called to marriage, Raphael may not be visibly directing you to your spouse, but by being prayerful and obedient to the laws of God, you too have the chance for the love and family life deemed for you from all eternity. Contrary to what our popular culture portrays marriage to be, we know it is a high calling and a holy state. Marriage was instituted by God for our good. 
It is fun, exciting, fulfilling, challenging, and full of love. And though there are statistics that claim the opposite, we know that marriage works. Fidelity, trust, forgiveness, and sacrifice are necessary terms for survival. But through them, marriage is meant to last. It is a path of commitment until death do you part. Together, you and your spouse are to walk through life and into heaven and someday look upon the beatific vision. And when one after another we shall have fallen asleep, may all of us find again our family in paradise, united in his sacred heart. But no, the dogs seem to be more important. Uh, oh, Mr. Mrs. Yeah. O'Shea, it's not. Excuse me, up. we are you on the air. Off. I screwed Today. up. Today. We need to uh, speak again, please. Okay. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> the modern day society seems, well, they don't seem to understand it anymore. It doesn't realize that sacrifice means love and, and that and... And that, sorry, <laughs> and that I knew it was not good for me to get alone. Sorry. This is where we get up and dance. This <laughs> is where we get up and dance. <laughs> <laughs>